one of the things you might notice if you come down to the Chilterns and have a little walk around the forests of Buckinghamshire is the very, very typical silver bark on the trees. That's because the majority of the forest in the Chilterns is beech forest, which was planted for the uh, Victorian and Edwardian furniture industry. Now, I've just picked up this camera. Um, this camera has been sitting in a, a bit of woodland adjoining a private garden for about two and a half months. Um, the lady had seen a lynx um, periodically over a few years. She'd seen lynx on her property. Um, she emailed me. Um, she actually had some hair samples, which was quite rare really in um, the British research. We very rarely actually get our hands on some physical hair or, or, or scat. Um, now, we didn't actually get it DNA analysed, but we did send it to Jonathan McGowan, um, as you, I'm sure a lot of you that follow the research know. He's a, he's a very knowledgeable fellow. Um, and he conducted some initial microscopic um, examination of the hairs and, and basically he sent me an email describing the possibility of it being lynx in particular um, and basically for as much evidence or as much information you can get out of a single hair he basically said it is possibly a lynx hair um, there are a few other possibilities but from what he has analysed from it it is possibly lynx now the reason I've put so much weight and effort into this particular incident with the links at the lady's house is um, she saw it at quite close range and there has been historic reports of the same type of animal in this area period. That's, that, that's been going on for at least 20 years um, as far as I know with reports being made to um, organisations, research organisations who research big cats in this country. Um, now, I want to just touch on a point now um, to do with extinction and animals which are supposed to be extinct but perhaps still reoccur in areas where they once were supposed to inhabit and perhaps they now don't. My fellow researcher Steve Short picked up on this on his interview um, he did for the British Big Cat Research Group channel. And he said that when he was young, he saw a lynx. And he also pointed on the fact that he believed that lynx had never, ever gone extinct. Now, that's a very interesting point because time and time again now, we're learning of animals such as the Barbary leopard, um, the leopards in Georgia, in southern Russia. You know, they thought that the leopards had been extinct for years. And it's not until people actually went in there and had a look, they actually realised that there was quite a substantial number of them still there. It's as if the cats had taken on a sort of cryptozoological status, um, which of course is ironic because um, the big cats being sighted in Britain is treated um, with the same sort of uh, distaste generally as Bigfoot and Loch Ness Monster. But it has become very, very, very apparent that lynx have inhabited areas for a very long time and have gone completely unnoticed. Um, and, you know, with the Chiltern Forest and some of the terrain you see behind me, this is exactly what I'm talking about. This is the sort of place where you could hide, easily hide, a population of cats. I mean, there's thousands of deer. I was just driving down the road here and there's just loads of deer, you know, loads of deer. Um, and the roe deer, you know, they come up quite high. So they're quite big deer, the roe deer. And um, lynxes, you know, they're, they're, they're quite small cats um, in comparison to their cousins, the leopard, for instance. So I see absolutely no reason why lynx could still be around. And um, talking to people that know about nature and Wales and Scotland and the Highlands, a lot of people, local people, have always accepted that links are still there so you know these official extinction dates and 6,000 years which has been proved again completely you know they used to think 6,000 years ago the lynx Britain died out you know they found bones in Yorkshire now which brings that date way way more recent than three three thousand years um, 
So the possibility that there are links still living in the Chilterns and have actually just been perhaps initially hunted to uh, a, a specific density which was so low that now they're just so undetectable that they were just classified extinct and still live in relatively low numbers to this day under cover in the landscape. This can be seen actually with the eastern panther or the eastern mountain lion in the United States. For years they thought that, and even, well, still officially, they don't exist in the eastern part of the United States except for the Florida panther population. Um, now, Monster Quest did an expedition to find out what was killing dogs. I think it was either Swamp Beast Stalker, I don't know which one in particular, but dogs were being killed and eaten at a particular scene. Um, and this was quite far east. I think this was just off the state of New York, one of the American states near there. And usually with these cryptozoological um, documentaries, they never, they put cameras up, they never find anything. Well, what they actually found was that there was a puma living wild in the area. Now, the puma was supposed to have gone extinct for at least 150 years from them areas, but yet they turned up. Um, again, you know, turned up somewhere where they weren't supposed to be living. And what I believe is that the pumas have just been hunted to such low densities that they might as well have been extinct because no one would have noticed them there at all. Um, and with sightings on the increase in North America, it's probably just the case that they've, the ones that are very elusive, were the ones that always escape the gun, and they're the ones that have bred, and their very cautious nature has been selectively bred into that very low population that's still left there. Um, which means you have an ultra resistant um, population of cats, which are even harder. Um, even less likely to show themselves um, and you know regardless of what I've said in some of these videos or about you know looking for cats in Africa it's, it's still incredibly incredibly rare to see a big cat even in Africa you know um, Rick Minter deals with this really well in his book he actually explains some of the footage we have of leopards for instance you know it's a lot of that stuff is staged you see you know or there's a local leopard that's you know, grown up seeing jeeps and tourists and they, they, they focus in on a mother with a cab, cub that's very used to seeing people. And they use that as the the um, the prototype for their documentary, you know. It's not usually the case. You won't see these animals. And with this sort of dense scrub vegetation, which is quite common, especially in the Chilterns, I mean, defy needle in a haystack. You really, really cannot even begin to comprehend what you're up against trying to find one of these animals in that. This is what the British big cat researcher has to deal with. And it's needle in a haystack doesn't even begin to describe what we're up against here. And for those people that say it's a load of old rubbish, these guys are nuts, you know, going out looking for big cats, all we're doing is we're just trying to look at the sightings, 2,000 annual reports a year, that's a lot, you know, they're official reports, they're people calling up the police or, or calling the newspapers, you know, there's a big cat out here, you know, I've seen it, I've seen it with my own eyes, you've got to get, you've got to, you've got to address this, you know. So, all in all, an interesting subject, the idea of extinction, not always as clear cut as you think, and um, if you want to go on about native animals and what should be allowed to live in this country and what shouldn't, then you can get into a whole different conversation and I think that's probably going to be another video all of itself. Um, but until that, you know, have a think about them things and, you know, you probably know someone who has seen a big cat. I always say there's always usually someone you know who knows someone who's seen a big cat and given that there's 80 million people in the UK, you know, you've got to do the math.